Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Tips and Tricks Tuesday and I had a request um, for showing how I color leaves and the request was quite specific, um, specifically Joanna Bashford leaves. I only have two Johanna Bashford books, um, the Christmas book and World of Wonders. So World of Wonders has a lot of really, really good leaf type of and floral type of pictures. So I figured we would start with this one. Now, I have colored a few in here, but not very many with leaves. So I gotta find one that has a good amount of different variations of leaves. to work with so that I can show you both floral and leaf. This has a really good variation, good amount of variations. So we may do that one. Um, or the birds, but these are very realistic and I would color them very realistically. So I'll start with the birds, I think just to show um, some realistic um, coloring. I have my Arteza or Arteza, however you want to pronounce it, um, colored pencils in my holder. So let's get started. Well, maybe. There's not a lot of florals in there. Of course, there's the apple blossoms and the strawberry blossoms, but those are very particularly basic. I want to do something that is definitely um, Johanna-ish. That we can make a little bit whimsical in certain areas and realistic in others. That one's got lots of florals, lots of little tiny leaves. Sorry about the camera. Just trying to... The cat has some really good florals and leaves. So I think we'll, we'll work on the cat. It's got some definite definitely large areas for the florals and the leaves and of course we can definitely do it whimsical. So um, with World of Wonders it's there's a lot of realistic um, plants and flora and fauna. Um, for example this strawberry page here is very realistic and I would color it as a strawberry an actual strawberry plant. And then you have the whimsical, where it's very whimsical. It's, it's uh, a lot of florals on the cat. So the cat, I would color um, a lot less realistically than I would the strawberries. So let's start with a couple of strawberry leaves just to show you how I would do them realistically. Actually, this one here I can definitely do realistic as well as... Um, whimsical. So let's start here and we'll put you on the close-up camera and we'll tip you up just a touch here and hopefully you guys can see that just fine. So we're going to start with these leaves here and this little berries and the flower. So let's start with the flower. Now I'm going to do some oranges and whites and greens in the the cat maybe some purples so let's do this flower in pinks so I've got my chart my swatch chart here uh, another thing that uh, you can definitely see how I do florals is with this swatch chart because I have done all sorts of florals and bugs and butterflies uh, ladybugs and butterflies on this as well and 
I have created my own swatch sheets and added these florals to it because I do color quite a few floral pictures. I'm just looking for my sharpener here. Now with the um, Arteza or Arteza, I, I say Arteza, so that's what I'm going to say because <laughs> I'm not going to correct myself every time. Um, what I do is I always start with the darker areas first with these pencils. They seem to blend a lot nicer that way. I use a sharp pencil and get darker at the base and then just feather it out into the lighter color. You will notice that there is a bit of dusting. These are quite smooth or quite soft. So they do seem to, they do tend to break apart a little bit uh, if you press too hard. And I always press too hard. I find they, for me, they're, they're very reminiscent of the Prismas where you can just put down the color and blend it together. I know a lot of people don't like the Arteza, but I do. I, I actually really like the Arteza pencils, so. I'm not going to be using any sort of water on this picture, so I'm not worried about any sort of movement of the color from the pencils. However, I did do that water test on my own pencils and found that I have absolutely no movement with my colors anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. I know that the newer Artezas have a bit of problems, but this set I was lucky and I don't have that problem. So back to the flora, flora and fauna, enough about the pencils. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm just putting in a dark layer down at the bottom and feathering it out, lightening up my touch and getting that color to feather out a little bit. And you will see why here in a moment. With Joanna's um, books, she does leave um, some hints and clues of where your shadow lines are going to be. So just follow the clues that are in the page. I've talked about clues before on Tips and Tricks Tuesdays and the clues are there to help you um, envision what the artist was envisioning at the time. It's not there to say okay this is the color you're going to use or that sort of thing uh, is just there to give you an idea of what light sources and, and what the artist has envisioned. Of course, you never have to follow the artist, do your own thing, but I like to follow the clues just because it makes my life a little bit easier and I am all for easy. Once again, just going in very, very dark at the tip and feathering that out, lightening it up as I come out into the flower petal. Following those clues of where that flower is bending and moving. Now, the, I am coloring in the book, so this is a little bit more difficult than if I was to actually print this out because I can't turn the page. <laughs> I am a page turner. I make no qualms about it. I'm not, I'm not uh, very bendy. Okay, so there we have the dark areas done. Now, I'm going to take Flamingo Pink, which is, I think, one of the lighter pinks. No, I think I want this one. 
this one here, number 26, which is peony pink. <sighs> and I'm just going into those feathered areas and bringing them out a little bit. And just blending right into that darker area. Going a little bit heavier handed where it's connecting to the dark just to blend those two colors together a little bit. Like that. I do apologize for the lateness of today's video. I had to human. I had to adult. I don't like adulting. So, coloring after adulting is always the preferred. <laughs> I'm just going into that deep area and feathering it out, lightening my touch as it gets into the lighter area. Because the way that I see it is that these open areas are where the sun is hitting this petal and you want that to be lighter. Just like in my light source videos, you follow the clues from the, the, the artist and you will be able to tell where your light source is coming from. She has the light source coming directly at the image. So the areas directly in front of the image are going to be lighter. Now I'm going to take a bit of a peachy color. So I think it's this one that I want. Uh, yes. Now this is a very light color and it's got a bit of a peachy tone to it. And I'm just going into those center areas. Uh, I can't tell you what color it is. It's number 83. <laughs> I could tell you if I looked at my other swatch, but... This one is uh, definitely getting there to a point where I'm going to need to start using an extender with it. This isn't exactly the color I was hoping it would be on top of this pink. So I'm going to actually grab a different color as well and just layer a little bit of it on there. So I'm going to actually grab number 10 and this one is Marmalade Orange. And I'm just going to lightly layer that on there. Doesn't have to be heavy, just really lightly so it's visible. And I'm just going to blend everything together like that. I'm just going to do all the rest of the petals with it. And it 
gives a nice tone, creamy tone, sort of like the, the rays of the sun are touching it and making it glow. like that. Okay, and then we're going to take some yellow and we're going to put a nice yellow center to the flower. Like that. So there's our flower. Now, like I said, with this book it does give you the ability to go a little bit more whimsical with your color schemes, with your leaf schemes and that sort of thing. Now with the pink flower I want to do um, let's see what's a good color to go with the pink. Well actually I think I'm going to go natural with these flowers just the, these leaves just to show you the natural look. So I'm going to grab fern green I think Let's see, is this one too dark? Uh, it's not too bad. No, maybe not fern green. Let's go with number 94. I'll need that one. is okay too. Alright, so we've got 93, number 6, and number 41. So number 41 is our darkest. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the center and the tips and the shadow areas. I really should have sharpened this. get close to the the plant there. I'm going to do just down the center with that number 41. And then I'm going to take number 93 and I'm just going to do the edges. Now this is a fairly dark color as well, but it's lighter than the other one. So I'm just going in and putting the colors into those veins. And then I've got number six, which is matcha green, which is a lighter much lighter green and I'm going right into all the other colors and blending those right in to the lighter green. Bringing them out, extending them into that light green. The more open areas are going to get lighter, the closer to the darker areas will get lighter. So of course the more open areas are the areas that are being touched by the light. So they're going to be lighter. like that. Now I'm also going to take, uh, where is it, I think this one, nope that's pear. Um, where, where, <laughs> uh, this one here. 
this one here which is lime green and it's got quite a bit of bright yellow in it. It's a yellow green and I'm just going to go down the area that is going to be a little bit brighter. I'm going to take that matcha green Make sure that we get all the way into those other areas. Now if you find that any of your areas aren't as dark or as light as you want them to be, there are several different ways that you can accent or darken. Darken of course is adding more color. However, if you've already burnished your page and you don't have any tooth left, you can of course erase it a little bit and bring that tooth back up or you can use your alcohol marker and blend it together which flattens the pigment and brings that tooth back up a little bit as well. Just like that. So now we're going to move on to the next leaf. And I'm actually going to sharpen these because they're not very sharp. And I need them to be sharper. So there's the darkest. And then a little bit of basil. Some matcha, matcha, matcha. And then some, and another person uh, definitely to watch if you um, are trying to, to figure out how to color a Johanna Basford. First of all is, of course, Johanna Basford. Um, but second of all is another wonderful YouTube artist, um, Emily Illustrates. And, or Emily Illustrator. That's it. Emily Illustrator. Um, Johanna Basford is one of her absolute favorite artists. And she does color a lot of uh, Johanna Basford. And she does a absolutely favorite fantastic job of, of coloring her. So I will leave a link um, info card uh, on the video here as well as a link in the description to Emily's channel and uh, definitely give her a peek if you are having difficulties with how to color the flora and the fauna of Joanna's books because, yeah, Emily does a bang-up job of it. Watch her and I go, okay, well maybe I shouldn't bother with that. <laughs> but then I remember that we're all our own people. And, you know, I can show you how I do it. However, how I do it may not be the best way for you. It all depends upon what you envision for the page, for the picture, and how you feel when you're doing it. So I've laid down the dark, darkest color first, medium color, and now I'm laying down a light color. Now I have my vision is is that this leaf is turned up a little bit on the edges or turned down a little bit and 
popping up a little bit here and here. So these edges are all turned down, so we want them to be a little bit darker because they're in a shadow area. And we want that center area to be a little bit brighter. Ah! Don't press too hard and break your pencil. That was just because I had over sharpened it. It was a very sharp point. And at this point I'm just burnishing it with the lime and putting in a little bit of that bright color, making sure it's all blended together. And like I say, um, with these pencils in particular, I tend to go from dark to light because they do seem to blend better that way. If you go from light to dark, I find that you end up with an odd line and I, I really don't like the odd line. <laughs> so I don't tend to color that direction. Okay, so we're going to do one more of the realistic leaves and then we'll move on to these leaves here and I'll do them whimsical and then we'll move on to the uh, drop flowers here and yeah, some of the other different leaves because there's so many different um, leaf shapes and that sort of thing. We want to you know, see how to color each one. So we'll just quickly do this one here. Once again I'm going in with forest green which is my one of my darker greens and I'm just filling that center area up at the tip. To me the the leaf is humping here. Well it's uh, bending here. That's the better word. <laughs> so the, this area here and here are going to be the brightest. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with the basil green, which is still a dark green, but it's a lot lighter. And you can do this with any pencil. And all I'm doing is I'm just gently feathering that darkness out, going into the really dark area blending it in, making sure there's no harsh line there, and feathering that out into the lighter areas so that when I mix the light color into it, I have something to mix with. Now I'm going in with the matcha green, and I'm going right into that area that I feathered out Now, as you can probably tell with this one here, I went down the, the seams of the leaves and these front ones I did not. And the reason for that is because I didn't want to give that center area too much darkness. The darkness that's there from the artist is more than enough. If I found that they were a little bit too washed out because of the light color I was using, I would go back over it and put in those light colors, or dark colors, I mean. So I'm just going in with the lime green 
and blending that all together. So I have also found with the Arteza pencils that they blend really well with themselves. So, you know, so if, of course I could use a blender pencil to do this, but I find that with them, the blender pencils tend to um, what's the word I'm looking for? Muddy them. Make them all muddy. And I don't want them muddied. I want those bright colors to stay bright. Okay, so there is our greens and our pink type of flower. Now we're going to go a little bit more whimsical with this floral here and we're going to actually add some blues. So I'm going to grab some light blue here. So robin egg blue and sea blue and I think we're going to grab some purples as well. So I've got amethyst and violet. So all different colors. Very, very whimsical color palette. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sharpen this. <laughs> That's the first thing I'm going to do is sharpen. I did my color chart so all of my pencils are dull from doing the color chart from swatching. That one didn't like that sharpener. That's fine. It didn't do anything horrible. So I'm just going to go down the center of the flower and do the edges here with this blue. And I'm not pressing hard. I'm doing this very lightly. And this is where I will show you how how I, I maintain that darkness in the center. So that one was a sea blue. This one is violet. Now this one here, the leaf is very out in the open, so it's getting a lot of the light. So we're going to use the lighter colors on it. Now I'm just lightening up really, really light here in the center. And then I'm going to take my Robin Egg Blue I'm going to sharpen it. Try not to get it too sharp. And I'm just going to go off of where the blue is and into that violet. course when you mix in the violet into the blue you're going to end up with a bit of a purple. And that's why I did that very very lightly because I didn't want it to have a dark purple there. I wanted that light blue undertone. I'm just going gently over top of it with the violet. And then I'm going to take the sea blue again and I'm just going to sharpen this a little bit because I need it to be a nice sharp point. 
Now this is uh, where I would suggest using your blender pencil because it is quite a bit more color where using your light tone, your light color, isn't something that you want to do all over your picture because my lightest color of course is that blue and I don't want that blue to be everywhere. I just want it to be in a certain area. So if I was to actually blend with this blue I would end up with a purple leaf. So instead I'm going to take my Caran Dash blender if I can find it maybe. Oh, here's, here's my nub. I have a nubby one. And I'm just going to go from the blue into the purple. Maintaining that blue color in the center and blending out into that pinky purple color. So this is a colorless blender and as you can see it works quite quite well. The only problem I find with these pencils and a colorless blender is sometimes it will pick up that dark ink and mix into the color of the flower. Alright, so now these ones here are a little bit different because this area here is turned and this area here is turned. So the parts that are touching the light are right here in the center. So I'm using a darker purple on this, this leaf than I did on this one. So I am using amethyst on that area. And then I'm going in with the violet. And I'm just very, very lightly putting down the violet in the areas I want the light to be hitting. And then I'm going to go in with the robin egg blue into those violet areas. And then I'm going to go back through with the sea blue. And we touch up those veins of the leaf. And of course you can you can add, you can go back in and, and just add a bit more of this and a bit more of that until you're satisfied with the color that you that you envision. If you're not reaching the color that you're envisioning, add more color. Change your vision. Um, you know, work with it. I find that's one reason why I enjoy color pencils is because they are very forgiving. You can change it. Where with say alcohol markers or water mar water markers or paint. Uh, paint you can change it a little bit but inks and things that are very permanent it's very difficult to change it after you've said okay I'm done. And sometimes even while you're saying okay I'm done. <laughs> so once again this one here is turned. So this 
area down here is darker. This area up here is lighter. Just very, very gently, very lightly putting in that light violet there. And then going in with your robin egg blue. Taking your sea blue and just darkening up those dark areas again in the center. Another thing that you have to remember is how much of the white spot is showing whether or not you have enough layers of color down to use the blender pencil. The blender pencil moves the, the colors around so you gotta try to make sure that you have enough color there for the pencil to move. So I'm just blending into the light areas into the dark. trying not to do too much of a cross-contamination but still blend out those lines. And there we have it. So with Johanna's books, um, you know, she has things that are in the forefront and then things that are in the back. So the cat is in front of everything basically it's sitting on this leaf here this set here is in the background this set here is in the background when she wants something that's basically shadowed or fairly dark because everything in front is collecting the light she doesn't put a lot of detail in it I have noticed so when I come across a uh, Thing such as this group of leaves back here, I tend to make them darker and more of a gray color. So I need number 98. Uh, no, that's not it. It's right here. Right in front of me, which is sage green. And number... Um, I think 92, no, number 59, which I think I have out already, no, number 59 is a, a bluey green color. It's a very dark color, so it should be this one here. Yes. So this is jade green and sage green. Sage green. So there's the jade green, and this is the sage green. So I still do them with greens to, to give them that look that they are a plant. However, I tend to just give them a gray look, uh, a darker look, so that they look like they are in the background. So I'm starting out with the 
uh, jade green. And I'm just covering the edges really dark. And then feathering that into the center and getting lighter as I go into the center. I know it looks really gray to you guys, but it's actually a green. And then I take the sage green, which is a gray green, and I just fit, you know, add to that center color, drawing that darker green of the jade green into the center. This is where I do a lot of layering because I've, I have a certain point of color in my brain, but I know if I tried to put it all down at once, I would end up with some really harsh lines. And because these are undetailed, if you have really harsh lines, they stick out. And these are just background plants that are just going to sit in the background. Yes, they, they need to be a nice color, but if you use too heavy of a hand, especially with the Arteza colored pencils, um, you will find that, you, uh, that with an undefined area such as these, that you will add more definition to them than you want. And I could definitely add definition to these. It wouldn't hurt them at all. But I want them to show as, as basically a shadow of, of a plant here. And if I just go back and forth with these two colors, it gives me a, a good amount of the green, but it still gives me that gray-green shadowed look. And then as I get closer to the cat where the, the leaves are blocked completely, I will start using more of the darker color and less of the lighter color. Okay. And like I said, you know, do darker around the edges. Lift your pencil, you know, lift the weight off your pencil, the pressure, whatever you want to call it. And just let the, the color just gently glide onto the page. Don't worry if it's too light, we're going to be adding more.
So I hope you are all looking forward to the Julia in July colorathon. That will be going on this weekend. I will be live at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Friday morning. So I hope to see lots of you in there supporting the colorathon and supporting myself as well as Shell Artie and all of the rest of the wonderful artists that have accepted the um, invitation to the colorathon. It's an absolutely wonderful idea and I just I was tickled pink when they asked me to to join. It was like, oh yes. I was going to color along with it anyway, but it, it makes me feel good that they invited me. Okay, so as we get down here to the darker areas, I have a little smudge there that is a little bit darker than I want it to be. which is fine. I just go over it a little bit. Eh, eh, details. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to get down here into these darker areas. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually put a heavier hand in those areas closest to the shadow of the cat. And then I'm going to take my lighter color and I'm just putting it in the bottom area here that isn't in the shadow. Same with this one here. This one here has a lot of shadow, so we're going to do this one a lot darker. stem is in the light so I'm just going to do that. Same with down here. This one here has a lot of blockage from that leaf. And I know I've missed two leaves up there. I just haven't. I will get to them. <laughs> I just wanted to show you how to how I do the shadowy type of areas. This one here has a little bit that is hitting more of the light area. So I'm coloring where you guys can't see me. <laughs> now this one here is hidden by the 
plant in front of it. So we're going to do it in the darker color with just a touch of the light to blend it in. Same with this one here. The tip is very much going to be darker because it's bending there. Just going to feather that in, make it nice and light, darken up those edges a bit. I'm a huge fan of gray greens, just in case you didn't, you didn't know. <laughs> gray greens are wonderful, wonderful colors. It uh, gives you the ability to shadow a f bit of flora. On, on your plants, on your leaves, on your fauna. but it also gives you that gray green look on sage plants on um, there's quite a few plants that are actually a gray green color So there are our plants. Now I'm going to take this. Um, actually, I want to take more of a red, I think. Uh, let's see, a bit of crimson. little berries. And like I said, it's your picture, it's your imagination. Of course, color it exactly how you see it. Now I've got these little tiny leaves down here and I want to do them pink. So maybe purple. A little bit of eggplant. I'm just going to do a little bit of eggplant here. And then I'm going to take uh, fuchsia. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we've done so far. Move all these pencils back into their places. I'll put all those back after. All right, so, so we've covered realistic leaves, a flora, some berries. Now the berries I will put uh, little, little dots on with um, some acrylic. 
uh, whether it be a gel pen or uh, acrylic paint, but I've put little drops on there. Uh, we've done a blue leaf, blue purple leaf here, and in actuality, I can go out to my garden right now and pick a leaf off of my blueberry plant and it's got a lot of these colors in it. Of course it's got some yellows and, and um, pinks in it too. Uh, just gonna fill that in. But I could go out to my garden right now and pull um, a leaf and show you that sometimes even though we're trying to be whimsical um, we've actually copied a actual coloring of a leaf and that's basically all there is to it uh, look at your light sources look at where your light is going to be hitting this so your light on this one here is going to be hitting smack dab in the center the way you know that is because the artist has given you hints. It's She's given you clues. Um, let me grab a pencil here. So these are clues. These little lines right here are clues that that's going to be shadowed. These little lines are clues that that's a little bit of a shadow going straight into the plant. So these are shadows. This area here, because it's all open, is where your light is going to be hitting. This is a shadow because the cat's in the way. This is a shadow because of the turn of the leaf, of the flower, the, the, the petal. You know, but open areas are going to be where your light source is hitting. So, straight down. That's your light source. Because this leaf is turned, the light is hitting this side of it. It's hitting this side of it. It's hitting flat on here. Hopefully that makes sense and that's understandable. Uh, this leaf here is curved. You can tell by the S shape on the outside of it. So it's curved and this part here is sticking up. Same with this one here. You can tell by this curve that this part here is sticking up. This one here it's a little bit harder to tell, but this one here you can definitely tell there's a curve to it by the curve in the, in the tip of the leaf. But that's basically it. Use whatever colors you want to use. Um, start with a dark or a light depending upon what pencils you're using. And just remember your clues, remember your hints. You know, look at an actual leaf and see how it's it's moving, how how the the dimensions are and how the light hits it in the dimensions that are there. This one here, like I said, is got this tip sticking up and curved in. So it's going to be dark up until this part of the curve where it's sticking out into the light. And then it curves down where it's tipping under that flower. Same with this one. It's under the flower. This area here is tipping upwards. This one here I, I just colored it the same way that I colored these because there's not a lot of definition. There's not a lot of defining factors beyond the fact that you know there's going to be a shadow from the flower and there's a slight curve here where there isn't here. So you know that the leaf is curving this way. Alright guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, I will of course continue on with this next Tuesday and we'll look at how to color different um, parts of the cat and still maintain a good a representation of the flora on the cat. 
Of course, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to the channel. Hit that uh, subscribe button and ring the bell. I do put out a video every day. I am live on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Now, this Saturday I will not be live because I will be live on Friday for the Colorathon. So we're not going to have a live on Saturday because I don't want to have, you know, have uh, people think that they need to be watching me when the Colorathon is going on. There will be some wonderful YouTubers um, participating in the Colorathon and there is of course a schedule on the Colorathon, um, what is it called? video that's that's scheduled on my channel uh, in the links below in the description there is a schedule to the entire colorathon and every two hours is a new new youtuber that is participating so make sure you take a look at that um, <clears throat> schedule part of me and Go and visit as many of them as you can. Um, watch as many as you can. I am going to be coloring a picture out of uh, Julia Speary's new book. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick peek. Sneak peek, sneak peek. Uh, let's see if I can find it with, there we go. So I will be coloring this picture out of this book. And of course I have a couple of different books of hers so I will be happily coloring along with everybody because I got lots to color and hopefully I will be able to get through at least the one that I'm coloring. It is only a two hour time frame but of course I will um, link the I have a link for the book and for the colorathon. There is a giveaway that will be a, a PDF of one of Julia's pictures, which is wonderful. Uh, what else was I going to tell you about? Yeah. So otherwise, guys, have fun. Of course, um, if you want to join over on the uh, membership. Um, just hit the join button below the video. Membership does have all sorts of perks. One of the perks of membership, of course, is something that I just started creating, or, or I just finished creating, uh, which is my swatch charts. Of course, they aren't for everybody. Um, you know, uh, they are a little bit smaller. So if you want a really large area, might not be the best swatch chart for you. I like them because it contains all all this swatch on this one page. And I get to you know have little doodads at the bottom where I can test those pencils. So when I'm doing a swatch um, of a new set or I'm showing you a set. I have something right there, right below the colors that I can I can show you how well they work. This one here, of course, is the Arteza 120 set. And I think it works quite nicely. So that is one of the perks available to members, uh, either unicorns, mermaids, or fairies. Uh, if you hit the join button, it tells you all about the different levels and the different perks that go with each level. Um, this week, I will be live, of course, for the colorathon, but I also have a members only live that um, I will be doing this weekend, uh, this Friday as well. And, um, you know, that, that is one of the perks of the membership is uh, hanging out and, and uh, having a special video just for you. So, once again, just to, you know, 
push myself a little bit more. <laughs> um, if you want to join, of course, hit the join button. Of course, this is not mandatory. Um, you don't have to join the membership to watch the videos other than the membership videos, which, yeah, you know how to watch those. <laughs> And of course, last but not least, um, if you want to join us over on Facebook, just fill out the, app, the application on the link down below and uh, we'll get you into the Facebook group as quickly as possible. Make sure that you fill out the application questions. It's just like two or three little questions. Um, we don't accept anybody that doesn't fill those out. So just make sure you fill those out. And of course, remember always relax color and stay safe. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope this was at least helpful and you know a little bit of fun. All right guys bye bye for now. You have a great day.